This video will show you a sample workflow in which we find the percent of each town in Vermont that has forests located on steep slopes. We're going to integrate local and web-based data for analysis and make use of a number of tools, everything from raster projections to tabular joins to tabulate area. The land cover data we're using for this project comes from the National Land Cover Database, or NLCD, which is produced by the USGS. In ArcGIS Pro, you see that I've got NLCD for the entire US. I've downloaded it, it's stored on my local network drive, and saved as an ERDAS Imagine raster file. This is 8-bit, 30-meter resolution data, and you can see it's got a huge file size, nearly 16 gigabytes. This is going to be challenging for me to process. My topographic data is going to consist of a 30-meter digital elevation model that I've downloaded from the Vermont Geodata Portal that's stored as a raster in my local file geodatabase. Finally, I'm going to load in Vermont Town Boundary data. This is stored on the Vermont GIS server, so it's not on my local computer or on a network drive. It's being streamed in over the web. This particular Town Boundaries layer is a Feature Service feature clause which is suitable for geoprocessing and analysis. Not all data streamed in from GIS services can be used for geoprocessing. When doing raster analysis, it's important to pay attention to the coordinate system of not only your data, but also the map. Because this project is making use of data located in Vermont, and the majority of the data sets are in Vermont State Plain at 83 meters, it's a good idea for me to confirm that that's also the coordinate system set for my map. The NLCD dataset covers the entirety of the United States. I'd like to get it to the Vermont State Plain coordinate system using the Project Raster tool, but it's far too large to do that right now. To make my project workflow more efficient, I'm first going to use a raster function to clip it down to roughly the extent of my study area. I'm selecting the NLCD 2011 as my input raster, and the clipping geometry is simply sent to the town boundaries extent. I'm not clipping it down to the actual town boundaries, just the extent of the town boundaries. And you can see that this new raster, clip in LCD 2011, is the rectangular extent corresponding to those town boundaries. In this project, I have two rasters with different extents and cell sizes. The environment settings allow me to control the output for each subsequent geoprocessing operation. I'm going to adjust my environment settings so that the extent cell size, and snap raster of all output aligned to my DEM24, the digital elevation model. The extent is the area of output, the cell size is the size of the cell, and the snap raster controls cell alignment. The environment settings only pertain to raster geoprocessing operations, not raster functions. To derive slope, I'm going to use the slope raster function. This creates a virtual raster layer in which slope is derived from my DEM24 raster layer. Because I'm using the slope raster function, it executes much more quickly than if I were running this as a geoprocessing tool. You can see I now have a new slope layer in my table of contents. To project my NLCD raster to the Vermont State Plane coordinate system, I'm going to use the Project Raster Geoprocessing tool. Because it's a geoprocessing tool, it will honor the environment settings I established earlier. Rather than navigate to find the coordinate system, it's easy for me to set it to match one of my existing layers that's in Vermont State Plain at 83 meters. Now my environment settings establish the cell size, but just to be safe, I can set it to match the DEM24. You can see in the X and Y locations there that it's 30 by 30, Vermont State Plain meters, so 30 meters by 30 meters. Examining the raster properties of my clipped raster gives me peace of mind that the geoprocessing operation functioned as I expected it to. I expect my projected NLCD layer, which is a thematic raster data set, to have an attribute table, but it doesn't have one, so I'll need to go into the geoprocessing tools and run the build raster attribute table tool to generate one. If after running the build raster attribute table you still don't see the raster attribute table, simply remove the layer and re-add it in. To find forested areas on steep slopes, I'm going to use the raster calculator. My NLCD forested codes are 41, 42, and 43 for deciduous, coniferous, and mixed respectively. Then I'm also going to use a criteria for steep slopes, greater than 125. Entering expressions from the tool section allows me to ensure that I'm using the appropriate map algebra syntax for this operation. 
Because the raster calculator is a geoprocessing tool, the output is a new raster which I'm saving inside of my file geodatabase. The raster calculator will honor the environment settings I set earlier because it's a geoprocessing tool, and the output will be a raster in which cells have two values, 0 if they do not meet the criteria, and 1 if they do meet the criteria. Now it's time to examine the output of my raster calculator expression, zooming in and comparing the output raster to my original slope and NLCD layers allows me to confirm that these pixels with a code of 1 do indeed correspond to areas with steep slopes and forested land cover. Examining the output shows me the number of cells that meet my criteria. However, I want to know this information by town, so I'll need to do a tabulate area in order to summarize this information. Tabulate area works by returning the area in map units, meters squared in this case, from a raster for a feature zone dataset. My zone dataset is going to be my town boundaries, which is to say I'm going to summarize my forest criteria steep slope layer within my town boundaries layer. Each town has a unique code called FIP6. This is an integer value that makes an excellent unique zone ID field. My input raster, of course, is going to be my forested steep slope, and my output is going to be a table. Because a part of a raster cell cannot be included, cells are determined to be inside or outside of a polygon based on their cell center. Opening the output table shows that for each unique town FIPS6 code, we have the area in meters squared of those that don't meet the criteria value 0 and those cells that do value 1. To get at the percent of the town's area that meets the forested steep slope criteria, I'm going to add a new field. I'm going to give that field both a field name and then a more descriptive alias which will display within ArcGIS. Setting the data type to float ensures that I can store decimal places for this particular attribute field. Once I've added my new field, I'm going to save it, and then I'm cleared to go ahead and actually run the percent forest calculation. To determine the percent forest, I'm going to use the Calculate Field tool. In the Calculate Field tool, I'm going to take the value of 1, which is those cells that met the criteria, and divide it by the sum of value 0 and value 1, which will be the total area of each town. I'll then multiply that by 100, which will give me the percent of each town that meets my forested steep slope criteria. Once I've entered my expression, I'll click on the check to validate it, and then press the Run tool to execute the Calculate Field operation. Once I've executed the Calculate Field tool, I can browse the table and explore the percent forest for each town. This is great, but it doesn't yet allow me to actually symbolize my town polygon layer by those values. To do that, I'll need to join this table back to the original town boundaries layer. I'll do that using that unique FIPS6 code. A join is a temporary link within an ArcGIS Pro project that establishes a relationship between one table and another table. With the join complete, I can zoom in, click on a town, and see that the attribute information includes both the original town layer plus the result of my tabulate area. I can now take advantage of this join and symbolize my town boundaries by the percent of forested steep slope areas. Symbolizing my data in this way allows me not only to generate cartographic products, but also to review my output to see if those towns that I expected to have forested steep slopes do in fact have high percentages of this category. In this example, we used raster functions and geoprocessing tools to find the percent of each town in Vermont that has forested areas on steep slopes.